Ever since, people wanted to sail the seas, to discover and to trade overseas. During the age of the great discoveries, the early maritime powers, Spain and Portugal, demanded exclusive sovereignty over the seas, a battle which was settled, effectively dividing the Atlantic Ocean in two by Pope Alexander VI and by the Treaty of Tordesillas in 1493-94. Other powers did not accept this dispute settlement, particularly the French, Dutch and the English. <coughs> Hugo Grotius, a Dutch legal scholar and early theorist of natural rights, published the book Mare Liberum in 1609 to establish a different legal understanding, the free sea. Hugo Grotius is often called the father of modern international law. With his book Mare Liberum, he provided the legal basis for controversy and a change in legal understanding in times of the great discoveries and founding of colonies. He developed the freedom of navigation, which is valid for more than 400 years and still is. This freedom of the seas was not unlimited. Coastal states claimed sovereignty over its coastal waters, both for economic as well as security interests. The breadth of the territorial sea was limited to three nautical miles, the range of a cannon mounted on the shore. The freedom of the seas and oceans was in place for many decades, without significant further development of the legal framework. Two world wars, decolonization with tensions between industrialized and developing countries, the Cold War, as well as technological developments, the exploration of marine resources, overfishing, an increase in marine pollution and other marine uses, all this demanded for an international legal instrument for the seas and oceans. A legal order for the seas and oceans. But how? Through an enormous international effort, since 1949 the international community discussed the law of the sea in the framework of the United Nations. Very long negotiations followed with an interim solution in 1958, but it was only in 1982 that the United Nations Convention for the Law of the Sea was adopted, which entered into force in 1994. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea is based on consensus of the contracting states. The UN Convention for the Law of the Sea, often called the Constitution for the Oceans, reflects customary international law and is one of the most significant and visionary international instruments of our time. It will continue to contribute to the maintenance of peace, justice and progress for all peoples of the world. From a legal freedom at sea, through the free seas, to the legal order for the seas and oceans today. A long way. But the challenges facing this legal order for the seas and oceans are constantly changing. The law of the sea has to be further developed continuously. For example, to promote the peaceful uses of the seas and oceans, the equitable and efficient utilization of their resources, the conservation of their living resources, and the study, protection, and preservation of the marine environment.